Hey there, Salon Doctor here. And a subject I'd like to share with you is from some conversations with clients lately about employee issues. And seems like there's always employee issues in the tanning salon business. But this is a kind of a take on how a lot of people lose what I would call their rock star employees. And to start with, they get bored. And, you know, I've been in retail since I was 14 years old. And when you're behind a retail counter and things are crazy, a lot of people are coming in, you're handling a lot of transactions, then it's a good job because you don't have time to think about other things, whatever. Uh, you, you, It's like you're rocking and rolling, you know? And it's the same thing with the tanning salon industry. As long as your people are coming in and we're helping them get their tans, helping them maybe to upgrade, selling them a lotion, getting them a better package, getting them into different equipment and different experiences, life's wonderful. But in between is employees get bored. And particularly when you're talking about some of the young uh, employees that we have, remember that these people grew up with the internet. They've all grew up with one of these in their hands and they can get instant reinforcement, instant engagement in their brain. So you have to remember that these are people that are easily, easily bored. And so how do smart salon owners which I think are really some smart people. And you look at their numbers, their numbers are good, but some of them maybe aren't so smart sometimes in the way that they lose their employees. And after working with nearly 600 salon owners over 31 years, the biggest challenge I face sometimes is training owners because if you're an owner of a tanning salon or a chain, you're a good entrepreneur. You probably went out, you selected a location, you researched, uh, a lending institution to give you the, the maybe the startup capital. You had to go negotiate equipment. You negotiated a lease. You did a whole bunch of things right. But maybe the last thing that you learned about as an entrepreneur is how to manage employees. And I tell you, there's a lot of ways to lose employees. There's a lot of ways to keep them. I'm going to show you some of the ways that you can lose employees. Sounds like kind of a negative take on it, but you'll see if some of it works. Uh, for what happens with you. Okay, so boredom, bad hiring choices, low-grade tanning, poor feedback. These are some of the things that get employees crazy. And that low-grade training, you get people training for two, three weeks on how to handle a transaction. And it's like taking a newbie and throwing them in that deep end of the pool and, and then walking away. It's scary and just as scary uh, is our new employees' fears of failure. When we get a new job and we have new bosses, we all want to please that boss. Some, it seems like, more than others, but it's that fear of failure, particularly the first few days, first few weeks or whatever. And sometimes that carries on even after they've been with us for a while. So training and retraining is crucial. The more investment that you put into that, you'll get more benefit back from it. We wanna get newbies successful as quick as possible. So you wanna encourage, reinforce, maybe shift share, have them work with um, somebody in your team, one of your peers. Yes, they should learn from you as the owner or the manager, but sometimes people learn better from their peers because their peers are not as intimidating to them. Maybe they're not so worried about pleasing their peers. So the goal, get new salespeople productive as soon as possible. Get them productive. And down here in the bottom, feedback, feedback on their performance needs to be constant and constructive. When people say to me constructive uh, criticism, that's the biggest oxymoron that there is. It, it is... This is a generation that is not used to uh, feedback that it seems negative because this is that soccer trophy generation. So most feedback is destructive, not constructive. And so think about this younger generation. Their self-esteem can be razor thin and easily broken from simple off the cuff comments. I encourage owners and managers all the time when you're going to say something to a, an employee, particularly a new employee, and even, even something that's been around for a while. As a manager of people for 53 years, 
And and I when I handle clients today, often I'm the manager, the de facto manager of those employees. I'm the one that's giving the feedback. And so I'll say to them, before you say something to an employee, think about, is this something that could be taken negatively? Now, if this employee has a bad attitude and bad efforts and whatever, okay, then that's a whole different ball game. It's time maybe to get tough and as, 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 as if we say a come to Jesus meeting. But think about what you're going to say to them and say to yourself, how would I react to what I'm about to say to them? And so a lot of times, particularly with new employees, we have what's called the sandwich method. We put the message we want to get through to them that where we want them to redirect their efforts, maybe inside of something that is also positive about what they're doing trying to be constructive. And so this generation of workers has a much lower threshold of redirection. And as we have seen, particularly with the COVID year last year and the stimulus payments that were there, we, we, have, we have these young employees. First of all, I, I have to tell you, for tanning salons, I don't like hiring somebody to work at the counter that's under 25 years old. I know that sounds crazy because some of you will say, well, it's the only ones I can get are the young ones. That's that's not true, depending upon how you recruit. And some of my, uh, my Facebook uh, webinars talks about recruiting. Uh, but that younger generation, they have a lower threshold for redirection. And you got to remember, no cheap shots. Think about what you're going to say before you say it, because these Kids, if we want to call them, can be very impulsive. And if they don't like what you said, they're going to walk out. Maybe they do the same thing with their parents. I don't know. So in your feedback, keep your emotions out of your feedback. If you want to redirect somebody and you're just highly ticked off at them, hide your emotions first. Put them aside before you talk to someone. I can't tell you how the many hundreds of times I've talked to salon owners and managers and I said, I know that you're honked off over what this employee is doing. Take a few breaths, maybe wait a couple hours or even a day overnight so you've got your emotions in check because you want your employees to see that your comments are designed to help them be better at what they're doing. When you use cheap shots or you get you show your emotion, they're not then focusing on what you're saying. They're focusing on your emotions that you've lost track over. So feedback, it needs to be constant. It needs to be constructive. And again, try that sandwich method or five good comments for one bad. And there are some people that will say to me, John, I just don't have time for that. You would have time. You would have lots of time to evaluate a tanning bed you're going to buy or a distributor you're going to buy lotions from. Or who are you going to buy your lamps from for relamping the bed? This person, these people that work for you are every bit as important and in many cases more important than what you've got sitting there in the salon before an employee, excuse me, before a customer walks in. So keep that in mind. Also, one of the things that is a good way to lose people is you're trying to hire and compensate good salon help on the cheap. And you see the comment here. I. I've had people say this to me. I want to buy high value beds at antique prices. Well, who wouldn't? As you see the two examples over there, <laughs> the one over here with my cursor is it's like a surfboard with bulbs on it, you know. And okay, of course, that's ridiculous. Who's going to buy that? But you can't buy high valued beds always at cheap prices. Now, I just talked to a client today that got a great buy. I happened to be on an Ergoline 8,500 and she paid uh, some small dollars for it. And I can congratulated her that she got that at that price. But most of the time you're paying some pretty good prices to get good beds. And, you know, trying to hire good salon help on the cheap, it just doesn't make sense. Um, yes, you can control payroll. And that's what people will say to me. Well, that's one of my expenses I can control. You can, you can control it all the way to being out of business. And I have to tell you, over the last couple of years, those salons that don't make it, and chains I might add, invariably one of the biggest problems they've got is employees. 
I see what their turnover is. When you're turnover, turning over 200% of your employees in a year, you've got a real problem. Now, are there a lot of reasons you can turn people over? But today, one of the biggest ones that we're saddled with is trying to hire good help on the cheap because we've changed in the retail marketplace, not just tanning salons, but we've changed the paradigm of what seems to people, to employees, what seems like fair hourly wages. So if, you know, there's still the federal minimum wage, I think is seven and a quarter, which is absurd. You know, nobody even pays attention to that. But if you can, th if you think you can fire, if you can hire really good employees at $9 an hour, I wish you good luck. Because today's paradigm is they see McDonald's, they see Amazon, and even though it's completely different working environments, they're seeing $13, $14, $15 an hour. I'm not necessarily saying that you hire somebody starting at that, but and I've got webinars on YouTube about that as well. But if you're trying to hire people super on the cheap, uh, you're just not going to get good help. You're not going to get good help. Okay, because it's not reality. Why should somebody that's got good self-esteem and has got good attributes, attributes, responsible, reliable, mature thinking, good interpersonal skills, people that will be great behind your counter and great with your customers, if they've got a self-esteem that goes along with that, why would they want to come to work for you for $9 an hour? They're just not. All right, so you got great salon ambience. Let's say that you do. you got great beds, great locations but it's run by minimal cheap paid morons. Sorry, it sounds like a pretty terrible thing to say, but some of the people I see that we put behind counters, they're just, these are idiots. I, you know, I, I don't know what it is they're getting money from their parents or it, it just, it confounds me sometimes that how smart owners are and what great entrepreneurs they've been that they put morons behind the counter. I know it's a terrible thing to read, but it just seems like they're morons because they just don't do squat. And we need good people. If you have good people in a salon, that can compensate for maybe some equipment that's not quite as eye candy. So remember, don't hire and keep losers. They suck out your team's motivation. Bad employees will suck out motivation of other employees. Nobody that's really good wants to work in an environment where their fellow employees, their peers, are losers. You don't want to work on a shift where the other person on the shift is not cleaning beds and is on their Facebook. So there's a lot of ways you can lose employees, and there's a lot of ways you can keep them, too. In another uh, webinar, I will talk some more about how to keep good employees. And speaking of that, this was something that an owner said to me the other day. It was time for me to start hiring employees who were invested in the company, not just their paycheck. When you do your recruiting, look for somebody first and foremost, beside all those things I talked about, responsible, reliable, good interpersonal skills, but somebody that is impassioned about tanning. It's pretty hard to beat that. If they love the tanning business and love the environment of helping people with their tanning, that is huge. You want people invested in your company, engaged, if you will. And you want to know more about how to do that? Well, is it time to finally make a makeover? Are you going to wait until February? Please, if you're going to use my services, don't wait till February. The horse is out of the barn. And he's galloping. He's a couple miles down. It's very difficult to get you set up for peak season. Now is the time. This is actually my peak season right now because it is absolutely a mistake to wait. It almost sounded like it rhymed. I didn't mean it that way. Mistake to wait. If you want this fall and peak 2022 to be the best, then don't wait to see the doctor, right? By November 15th, 2021, it's too late because you're too late for a Black Friday week promotion. And what we do on Black Friday week promotions are killer. Absolutely the best. I don't think I've seen anybody that puts together a promotion with clients as well as I've done now for 31 years. And I've learned from that. I've learned from that 31 years because you, as salon owners and managers, you have teached, teached, you've taught, and trained me. 
So get ready now for November and December 21, 2021 and peak 2022. My consulting is really cheap. Now the first, the first consulting session we have, and it might be the only one you wanna have, it's a free consultation. So just go to www.johnrfr.com, sign up for a free consultation, and I'll guide you which way to go to make sure that you get what you need to be ready for this fall. It's almost too late now for Halloween because that's just coming up. And for Halloween, you want to make sure that you, the week before, which happens to be next week, you want to be encouraging spray tans because that's just a great natural for Halloween. Okay, so I've guided, consulted um, more than 570 indoor tanning salon companies from one location to 48 salons. Actually, the 48 salons now, I believe they have, he and she have 50, 58 or 57 salons, but I've done a lot of single salons. So you need help. I'm here to give it to you. I'm the doctor. Thank you for listening. Hope to hear from you soon.